Microsoft recently announced the Xbox Series S, a cheaper and weaker console option for the next generation. And while it's nice that there's a $300 option for those who have a tighter budget, I believe it's going to come at the cost and the quality of the games in this upcoming generation. To start, I just want to point out how the existence of this console kind of negates Microsoft's biggest selling point for the Xbox Series X. The lower price of the Series S comes at the cost mainly of the number of teraflops with the GPU and the SSD data rate. The Series X comes in at 12.5 teraflops, while the Series S has 4. And the way this is being marketed so far is that the only downgrade will be the resolution, with the Series X targeting 4K at 68 frames per second, and the Series S targeting 1440p at 60 frames per second. The main selling point for the Series X in the first place was the 12 teraflops. Oh, it's the most powerful console because it has two more teraflops than the PS5. Xbox definitely winning the next generation. <laughs> but then Microsoft announces this console with 8.5 less teraflops that will play the same games and the only downgrade is the resolution, which isn't even a bad downgrade considering most people don't even have a 4K display. It kind of makes the teraflop seem not very important, almost making the SSD seem more important for the next generational leap. And considering PS5 has a better SSD, which we have seen the importance of in games like Ratchet and Clank, it is very strange to me that Microsoft would release a console that downplays the importance of the only advantage they had over the PlayStation console. It would be like me trying to trade with you, and then right before we made a deal, I explained that the only thing I had to trade was not actually as valuable as I originally said. However, as detrimental as I might think the Xbox Series S is to the Xbox Series X, that is not the issue I have with it. My issue is that a weird console is going to lessen the generational gap and decrease the quality of games. I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert on computer science and coding and all that, but a weaker console is not going to be able to handle as much as a stronger one and limits the possibilities for game developers. To me, a new generation is warranted when there is significant changes to the possibilities for the game developers. I don't want to buy a whole new console just so the resolution can go from good to slightly better in 60 frames per second to 62 frames per second. And what really puts into perspective how small the Series S might make the generational leap, the Xbox One X has 6 teraflops, 2 more teraflops than the Series S. Game developers are now going to have to develop their games with the restriction of the game being able to run on the Series S. I think of some of the best games of other generations, and they are all the ones that are pushing the boundaries of what the console can do. Imagine if there was a PS3S that was half as powerful as the PS3 and launched with it. What if the PS3S was unable to load things quickly enough for the train scene in Uncharted 2 to function properly, and therefore that scene was scrapped? What if Fallout New Vegas couldn't run properly on the PS3S so they had to take out the huge battle on Hoover Dam at the end? My point is that developers will now have to limit their games to a weaker console, ultimately limiting the possibilities for games. Just look at how disappointing the Halo Infinite reveal was, and keep in mind, they are trying to make Halo Infinite playable on Xbox One. I do recognize that some games engines can deal with this problem with scalability, Fox Engine being a great example, but this still requires development time for game devs, as we all know, with the dreaded crunch and game delays, time is not something that developers have a lot of. Basically what I'm saying is having a weaker console now, considered part of this generation, is going to lessen the generational gap, impede on game devs, ultimately restrict the possibilities for the games. That is, this will only affect third party game devs and Microsoft exclusives, so might be another reason to go with PlayStation.